Good afternoon. We're here today to talk about how you can get a competitive advantage over everybody else that you come up against each and every day. How can you go about moving from that practice room superstar to being elite when it matters the most? You see, in life, there are winners and there are learners. And the people that are willing to continually learn are going to be the people that overcome more obstacles. When you shift it from losing to learning, to failing your way forward, so that you're gaining knowledge each and every day, you become unstoppable. And that's the difference between the elite and the practice room superstars. Ego is that enemy that most people let get in the way. Do you find it easy to ask for help? You know, is it a sign of strength or humility to ask for help in something you don't know? If you can't find the door through the wall, is it better to sit there and continually run in that wall and pivot and try to find a way around it? Or is it easier to ask somebody to help you knock that wall down or show you where the door is? That's the difference we're talking about here. And if you're ready to step into that untapped potential and gain that competitive edge, then you're in the right place. That is exactly what we're talking about here tonight. And what I want you to understand is, you know, what is it that you really want? Have you clearly defined exactly what it is that you are going after, that you're working towards each and every day? That clarity is the key to giving you everything you want. And you must know what it is and why you want that. You may want to be a state champion, but why? What is that driver that keeps you pushing when you're hurting? When that kid's, your opponent is putting it on you and you're having to work through that pain. When you're sweating out there on three a days and your legs are hurting, your back's hurting. You're in the weight room on leg day, pushing out heavy squats. What is it that keeps you going? What are you striving for that sets you apart from everybody else? And once you know that, then you can develop that toolbox of skills and the drills and attributes that come with them to build that plan, that map, to get you where you want to go. And once you have that, then you know exactly how to get there. What if you knew the exact performance skills, the mental performance skills that you need to overcome the mental barriers that have tripped you up before. What if instead of tossing your hands up in frustration, you could predictably and consistently develop the habits, the routines, and the mindset you need to achieve your goals and to compete at the highest levels of your competition, even when it feels hard? And what if you could do all that while mastering your mindset? How big of an edge would that give you 
over everybody else that you compete against. You see, at the end of the day, there's not much that separates the people in first to the people in second. Those little attributes that separate the top of the top are all inside of you now. And when you understand how to bring those pieces with you, how to smile when it's getting rough and getting tough, and to keep coming no matter how many times you feel like you've kind of been smacked and put knocked down. You get up and you keep coming. That relentlessness, that resiliency is what separates the very top, the elite. And that's what you're going to gain with this 30-day program. See, pillar one is really that elite mindset. It's all about flying your highest. You see, without having a focus and dialing in your intention, you're still going to have the struggle with your doubts and that internal critic that you have. Thinking that you just don't have the mental toughness that you need to reach your full potential. And getting those results, the difference is just about that you haven't gotten them yet. As you develop an elite mindset, you will start to see setbacks. Merely as things that you used to think of as a failure. Well, I want to challenge what you think of as a failure for you to see it as that first attempt in learning. So that fail really becomes an acronym for you. When you see it as a first attempt in learning, now all of a sudden it's just an opportunity to learn and grow. And then all the potential pressure kind of wipes away. If you remember the first time that you were at the free throw line and you shot your free throw shot, did it go in? Did you even expect it to go in when you shot? More than likely not. I know I didn't the first time I did. I was terrible. But we kept shooting. We kept practicing until we started making them. And I'm not like Steph Curry. I don't sit there and take 10,000 of them a day. He's mastered that skill. He's taken that many shots. I have not. That's the difference between him and I. And that's the difference between you and the next person above you. When you see it merely as an opportunity to grow and learn, to continually train yourself to get better every day, then you blast through those mental barriers that have held you back and you start stepping into your real potential. You start unlocking that realness that is you. And you start soaring to new heights. There's really a four-step formula that goes with this. And it starts with setting your intention. You know, when are you going to train? If you don't have it scheduled into your day now, then it's not going to happen. We've all heard that pretty much every sport is between 80 and 90% mental. Yet how much mental focus are you giving into your training each and every day? If you're like the majority of people out there, it's slim to none if there's any time that you're giving to it. And exactly right here we're saying, if you don't schedule it into your time, then it's not going to happen. And everybody that I work with, tell me how much time you're spending on this a day. If you're going to the gym and you're working out for 45 minutes to an hour to make a particular body part stronger, 
let's choose wrestling. You know, you're going to focus on that posterior chain. You're going to focus on rows, deadlifts, squats, focusing on your hamstrings, your glutes, your back, your big muscle movements. You're intentionally focusing on those because so much of it is generated from those areas of your body, your sprawls, your attacks with your legs driving in, using your back to pull and twist your opponent to gain an advantage. You're scheduling it and you're setting that intention that you're going to focus on this each and every day. And we're going to add 10 to 15 minutes of focus on your mind each and every day to start setting you on that path. And then you're going to have it scheduled into your day, whether you do it morning, afternoon, or night, or you break it up for three, five-minute periods through the day. When are you going to actually train to achieve this goal? When are you going to actually schedule this in there so it happens? And tell me how you're doing it. Then you have a plan and you have a way to attack this and focus on it and make it happen. That's the difference between the elite and everybody else. It's all about attracting what you want to have, building that clarity so you can measure it. And it's as simple as, are you doing what you said you're going to do? At the end of the day, can you check it off that you've done the work towards your goal? And this builds accountability, clarity like that diamond next to it. And it lets you get support because if you find an area where you're having trouble with it, that's when somebody helps step in, shows you a different way to do it. So that then you can have it there and measure it and check it off each and every day. Because when you start checking off what you've already done, you get that dopamine hit. You feel good about yourself. You accomplish something. And then you can reflect and refocus. So at the end of the week, I like to do mine on Sundays, for example. I reflect on how my week went. What went well? Where can I make improvements? And then I refocus and set my new intention for the upcoming week. How will I do better today? Where can I make a step forward? Where can I gain an inch? And then I ask, how can I do it better? Well, better, what is it? What is my exact parameter that I'm saying is better? How is it better? Those three questions, when you ask yourself that and you reflect and you refocus on your habits, are going to build that habit of adding to yourself every week. If you got 1% better every week, that's 52% better by the end of the year for 10 to 15 minutes a day. Would you make that trade off to have 52% 52 more in your life? I know I certainly would, and I do. And that's why we teach this to everybody. This is so important to gain that inch every day. And no, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be the way you want. You're going to get knocked down. And then you get up, you readjust, you refocus, and you step forward again. The goal is that every day you're making positive improvement. And you're going to see we have nine pillars, and we're going to go few, through a few of them tonight. Here's pillar two. What is it that's going to get you motivated and bring your full commitment to go after your goals? How bad do you want to be able to celebrate like this? Because no one is able of reaching those big goals or maxing out their potentials without that high level of motivation. That's that why we talked about at the beginning. When you understand what that why is, it gives you passion. It gives you purpose. And it keeps you focused on moving forward, even on those days when you get knocked down. Because when adversity does come knocking, 
the level of motivation and your commitment will determine whether you give up or whether you push through the discomfort and you push yourself out of your comfort zone to get to that next level. See, motivation and commitment are skills. They're developed by grit and determination and sticking through it when things get hard, when you don't feel like doing it and you do it anyways. That's when you develop grit and determination. That Rocky Balboa mentality to keep coming no matter how many times you get hit in the mouth. The thing is, when it gets hard, that's when you're getting close to breaking through. And you need somebody to show you how to do it a different way. That's all that hard means is that you're just doing it not wrong, just not right. I know it seems crazy, but if you're beating on a wall with a 10-pound sledge and it's not cracking, and somebody came along and gave you a 20-pound sledge and all of a sudden you started knocking out bricks, you didn't change what you were doing. You just added a new tool, and that's the difference. When you're ready to up-level that skill and build that determination, that focus to that next level, this is how you do it. So how do you start acting like you're more motivated? How can you have that look in your eye that says, I want this. I'm going to stand in here even if you throw that fastball in my head. When you make motivation a daily habit and you keep score, now you have something to track it off of. You have ways to keep track of everything and keep score of how this is working and how it's not. What habits did you change today? Did you shift the movie in your mind when you felt not good? Did you make a list of it and have a top 10 list that you could play in your head of all your accomplishments so you felt good, so you felt that motivation again? Measurement is motivation. Imagine if you were a baseball player and you played without keeping track of your stats. How would anybody know how good you are? If you're not willing to track what you're working on every day, then it just goes to show you where your focus is or is not. People treasure what they can measure. And if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And our focus is all about how can we get better every day? What are you doing differently today? How did you apply your skills? What did you shift and bring more attention, more focus into what you're doing? And how is it changing the game for you? And we want you to walk the walk. Be the leader that is so motivated by everybody around you that you motivate other people. And you're, like, you're probably asking, how do you do that? Well, it starts with asking five questions. It's about that clarity piece again. What do you want? You see, clarity is the key. You got to prioritize what you want. And if you don't know what you want, then you're willing to settle for anything. Saying yes to one thing means you have to say no to something else. If you say yes to dialing in and giving 10 to 15 minutes of your time every day to make your mindset better, maybe it's 10 to 15 minutes less playing a game on your phone, 10 to 15 minutes less talking to a buddy because what you're working on is more important to you. When you ask yourself, why do I want this? When you know that why that's going to drive you through those times where you don't want to do it, that's when you know you have that focus. And that's going to keep your motivation going.
Now we're jumping into pillar three. This is all about your self-talk. Imagine if you were to close your eyes right now and just tell yourself that I'm a state champion. I am committed to go to the biggest D1 school for my sport. I am at the elite level. And you can hear that internal dialogue already saying, no, you're not. You're not good enough to be there. Why should you get to go do that? Why do you deserve that opportunity? You're not big enough. You're not fast enough. Whatever it's saying, you can hear that in your head right now. And that talk derails you faster than anything else. You see, people who succeed don't do so because they evade these trials, these challenges. They do so because they've developed a skill set that allows them to move past this challenge and keep their focus and awareness where it needs to be. And with practice, you can too. You see, it just takes a highly trained level of focus, of being present in this moment and being aware of what's going on internally so you can block out those distractions. So you can navigate that river and perform consistently at your best when it's needed the most. When you can take that internal dialogue and say, hey, you know what? I'm not listening to you right now. When you can change what it sounds like and you can picture it as some crazy voice. Maybe you've all seen the, you know, the cartoon version of Lion King and you got Zazu with his morning report and you see that as your, your internal dialogue. It's kind of hard to take that thing seriously. But when you start shifting that focus, all of a sudden, everything comes right back here to the mindset so you can succeed. The purpose of getting your mind right is so that mentally, physically, emotionally, you're all moving in the right direction. And that's when success happens. That's when you succeed the most. You have to learn self-control and self-awareness for when it gets going so that you can reset your internal dialogue so that you can pull up a picture of, hey, you know what? I'm playing this game because I love it, because I love the sport and everything that's here for me. When you develop that discipline to create the mindset that you need in situations and you practice it over and over again so that you don't have to think about it. It just, you can flip a switch, make a gesture, take a breath and stop all that internal dialogue. All of a sudden you're going to have more success faster because you're pushing that envelope in a direction that you want. You know, have you ever had those moments where your mind was clear? You were internally calm and you were doing confident actions. You were focused on the process, not the score, not anything else, focused on that process, knowing that what you were doing in that moment was the most productive thing you could be doing. That's what gets you in that flow state that you've heard about. That's when you become confident that your preparation, excuse me, and production are in line with your goals, that everything is working in that moment because your mindset does affect your performance and everything that you get in your life. Pillar four is all about being focused on that process. If we had a balance beam that was sitting here on the floor right now, it's four inches wide, 50 feet long. How many people would have any trouble walking across it? 
you might wobble a little bit, but you could almost run across that balance beam. Now, if we put it 50 feet up in the air between two buildings, how many people are going to go across that balance beam now? The process hasn't changed. What you're focusing on has. When that balance beam was on the ground, you were focused on getting to the other side because you weren't focused on falling. When it's 50 feet up in the air, that's the first thing that goes through your head is that you're looking at that outcome. You're not looking at placing one foot in front of the other and moving across that balance beam. But if we change the focus of what was going on where there was a fire behind you and you have to get across that balance beam, you're going to find a way to get across that again, regardless of what happens. It's all about focusing on the process, what's going on right now. All of your hard work and dedication, all the practice you put in has gotten you ready for this moment. Just relax and be present right now. We all know the pressures of competition are demanding. They're mentally, physically, emotionally demanding. But when you intentionally and consistently train that self-control and your discipline to stay present and enjoy the present that it is right now, you're able to refocus when the inevitable challenges and obstacles come up. You can calmly evaluate them and make the most effective decisions. And as your self-control and discipline muscles get stronger, you can expect to be able to make these objective decisions under pressure and faster because you're embracing the process as an opportunity for growth, for learning, for development. That's the only difference between you and say Patrick Mahomes. His ability to scan the field and make split second adjustments to see the best opportunity because he's strengthened that muscle to scan the field and observe where the biggest opportunity is. How many times do you think he's done that in his 25, 26 year old life? Thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably. That's the difference. Practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more you get this dialed in. And that's what it's all about. It's embracing the process repeatedly. What I wanted you to kind of get to is when you almost get to that flush it mindset. And this is going to be one of the strategies that you learn. When bad things happen, are you able to move it, to move on past it? Before you move it, you almost need to hit that switch and flush it so that your mind clears back out and you got a fresh tank again. And this flushing process requires three steps. Number one, you have to have a physical action you associate with flushing. Wiping your shoulder off, adjusting your headgear, your helmet, your hat, touching the towels. Baseball players, you'll see them constantly adjusting their batting gloves, digging their foot in to make sure it's right just the way they want it. Make the association with those things so you're giving yourself an intentional task to focus your mind. Take a deep breath. Whatever happened, just take a deep breath. And as you breathe out, just breathe it all out. Blow it out of your body and release it. And three, say something that brings you back to the present moment. Let's go. Refocus. Move on. Whatever you say is fine. Just use it consistently so that it becomes a trigger for clearing your mind. And once you say that focus word, that trigger, you'll be back in that present moment. That's how simple some of these are. But if you don't know these techniques, how can you be expected to have them and use them? It's repetition. It's practice. It's that repetitive movement over and over, except you're moving it with your mind. 
These give you the keys so you can keep unlocking your mind. So you can move closer to what you're focusing. And isn't that the goal at the end of the day? To focus on what we want so we can be there and open up and be present in this moment. I love cartoons. Because the message in them is so simple. For instance, Kung Fu Panda. The Furious Five just got beaten by the tiger. And Poe just got back from training with Master Shifu. And Crane comes in and drops the Furious Five because they're all beat up. Poe freaks out because he's worried about not being good enough like when he came in. And he's focused on having to face that fight coming up. But he's not in the moment right now where he was just going toe to toe with the master. He forgets about that and he runs off and he starts shoving food in his mouth underneath the peach tree. And Master Ugwe walks over to him and climbs up on his stick and says, ah. he kind of jokingly says, uh, you eat when you get upset, huh? Poe's like, so? Because he has a mouthful of peaches. It's a big panda. And Igwe says, it's all right. You're so focused on the past and everything that you used to be. And you're focused on what may happen in the future. That you're not focused on being present right now. On being who you are. And being the best you can be in this moment. You see, the present is a gift. That's why it's called the present. And when you focus your mind on being here, being right now dialed in and giving your best effort with a great attitude, the outcome doesn't matter. Because you're going to be able to look at yourself and then look back to where you were. And see how far you've come because you've taken a time to invest in you. That is the best investment you can make in your life. When you invest in your mindset to develop that focus, that grit, that self-confidence, the belief in who you are and why you do what you do, you will become unstoppable. And at the end of the day, in sports, in life, in whatever, when you believe in yourself and you look forward to that day of taking action and learning from it, of failing your way forward, all of a sudden, the world opens up and you have every potential opportunity you need to be the best that you can be. And that's all you can ask for. Are you willing to invest in you and take this opportunity and add to your 30 days of mental performance? That's what this is all about. How can you add to who you are and what you do? And when you're willing to take that opportunity, send us a message because we can get you there. That's what we do. We help people go from where they are right now to remembering that dream they had so that light that they are can shine for everybody to see how great they are, to see how much work they put into themselves. That's the key to your mental performance. Put the work in. Take the opportunity to make your mind the best it can be. Add to your confidence, your resiliency, your mental toughness. Build those skill sets to be the best that you can be today. Thank you.